Okay, so this is Junior Roberts coming to you with real juniorroberts.com and in this video we're going to be looking at how to plot a graph in physics given a set of data. So here we have here we have a table right which show we have a so here we have a table with some data and we will be using this data to plot a graph. So we have length in one column and we have period squared. And this table actually shows data for the length and period of a simple pendulum. So the first thing that this question wants us to do is to plot a graph of t squared against length right so we're plotting t squared in second squared against length in meters so based on this statement here if we look closely we see where we are given an instruction to plot t squared in seconds squared against length so since t squared comes first we will plot t squared on the y-axis right and we will plot length on the x axis right so whatever comes first we plot on our y axis and whatever comes last we plot on our x axis so now that we have that out of the way we see we have our graph paper here so what we will have to do right now is to determine a suitable scale so we can plot t squared on the y axis and length on the x-axis. So I'm going to start with the x-axis and that's where we're going to plot length. So on the x-axis we're going to plot values from 0, point, from 0 to 0 0.70. Right? So we're going to have to choose a suitable scale to ensure that we can plot, we can plot all these data on the graph and we have our graph covering at least 50%. 50 to 75 percent of the graph paper. So the scale I'm going to use is a scale of for the x-axis I'm going to use a scale of uh, 2 centimeters to 0 0.1 right and you will recall that in a previous video I would mention to you a few scale ratio that we can use right so we can use one to one, one centimeter to one one centimeter to two one centimeter to three right or we can use decimals or multiples of those so let's now uh, put in our scale for the x-axis right so on the x-axis again every two centimeter we're incrementing by 0 0.1 so we're gonna have 0 0.1 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0 0.8. And again, on our x-axis, we're plotting length, right, L, in units of meters, right? And we're using a scale of 2 centimeter, to 0 0.1 meter. Now we will do the same thing for our y axis, right? So for our y axis, our values will go from 0 to 1.9. So for the y axis, the scale I will choose for my y axis will be so this is my y axis, and the scale I'm going to use is 2 centimeters to 0 to 0 0.2 second squared so now let's put in those values on the y-axis and again on the y axis uh, on the y-axis we're plotting period squared so let me write it period squared right which is t squared in units of second squared so now let's put in our scale for the y-axis so and again let me put in the scale so we're using 
two centimeters to 0 0.2 second squared. That's the scale for our y-axis. All right, so we'll go increment by 0.2 seconds. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, and 1.8. Right? So that's the scale for our y-axis. So now that we have both scales drawn up, or both axes, I should say, drawn up with our scale, we can now begin to plot our data. So what we do is we look at a value for length and we find its corresponding value for its period for the period squared of the pendulum corresponding to a certain length so we're seeing here that 0 0.1 uh, meters corresponds to 0 0.63 seconds squared so we have to plot 0 0.1 meters on the x-axis uh, corresponding to 0 0.63 on the y-axis so to do that we will simply go over to our graph paper, right, and we'll find 0 0.1, and then we find 0 0.63, right? So we have 0 0.1 right here, right? 0 0.1 is right here, so we have to find corresponding 0 0.63, right? So 0 0.63 will be somewhere about right here, because we have our values on the y-axis going up by 2 every 1 centimeter so we have six right here 6.2 6.4 6.6 6 6.8 and 7 right so 6.3 would be somewhere about right here so we can place a dot right place a dot and then we circle right so that is our first point now our second point is 0 0.2 corresponding to 0. 9. Alright, so 0 0.2 will correspond to 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 will be right here. So we'll place our dot and circle. Then 0 0.3 corresponds to 1.1. So we have 0 0.3 and 1.1 would be right here. So we'll place our dot. Right, and then we circle. Right, so we're using dots in circles to plot our point. Then 0 0.5 corresponds to 1.25. So 0 0.5 corresponds to 1.25.5 corresponds to 1 1.2, 1.22, 1.24, 1 1.25 is about right here. 1.25 is about right here, I should say. Right here, so we dot and we circle. Alright, then 0 0.6 corresponds to 1.52, so 0 0.6 corresponds to 1.52, so 1.52 will be about right here. All right, so with that, and we circle. All right, now we're left with 0 0.7, and it corresponds to 1.59. So, scroll up a little, so 0 0.7 corresponds to 1.59, so 1.59 would be uh, about right here, so we circle. Alright, so those are our points plotted, right, they are rather scattered, right, so now after we would have plot uh, the points, we now have to draw our line of best fit. So we'll get our ruler and we'll do that just now. Alright, so I have my ruler here. Now I'm going to line up my ruler on the points to get my line of best fit. Right, and again you remember that the line of best fit is the line that shows the best average of all the plotted points. Right, so I'm trying my best to get uh, a best fit line that will show the best average of all the points. So, if we see here, if we draw this line here, we 
we will get uh, two or three one two or three. All right. If we were to draw this line right here, we will see that we will have one two or three points on that side and one two three points on this side. And if you look closely, it would appear as if this line, if we were to draw it, we will get an even distribution of uh, points about the line. Even though we're not getting any points passing directly through the line, we're getting an even distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this as my line of best fit. So let me use maybe this color and draw my line of best fit. All right? So that right there is my line of best fit. So now, let's see what else the question wants us to do. So the question now wants us to determine the gradient of the line of best fit. So we're going to be doing that right now. All right? So we know that our formula for gradient is M, which stands for gradient, is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So what we need to do now is to actually select two points on our line that are far apart, right, and are not from our table. So I'm going to choose a point right here, right, and I'm going to choose uh, my next point right here, right. So now, now that I've chosen my two points on the line that are far apart, I'm going to take my ruler and draw a large triangle to determine the coordinates of those points. Right? So if I place my ruler, right? So I will so I will go down with my broken line like this. Right? And then I will do the same thing over to my y-axis, right? So I will go over my broken line, and this way I'm able to actually determine the values, the coordinates, I should say, for that point that I select just now. So I'm going to do the same thing for this point. All right, get my ruler in place. All right, and then make my broken line, and then I'll do the same thing down to the x-axis. Alright, so now I am able to determine my two, uh, my y2, y1 values, and x2 and x1 values. So, if we look closely, we'll get our y2 from this right here. So in this case, y2 is 1.7 seconds squared, so we have 1.7 seconds squared. And we're taking away y1. In this case, we're going to get y1 right here. So y1 is 0 0.7 second squared. 7 second squared. Right? And then we divide that by x2 minus x1. So x2 will be right here. So that's 0 0.75. So we're going to get 0 0.75 meters minus uh, 0 0.1 meter. Right now, if you take out our calculator, right, uh, we can actually find our answer for this. So we're gonna have so we have 1.7 minus 0 0.7. That's 1.0 second squared divided by 0 0.75 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.65 meters. So if we take our calculator and we say 1.0 divided by 0.65, right, we get an answer of 1.538. And we can simply round that up to 1.54. And in this case, it would be second squared per meter as our unit. All right? So that's the value for our gradient. So this was Junior Roberts with realjuniorroberts.com. If there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, please post them below in comments and I'll do my best 
to clear up any misconceptions for you. If you need further assistance to understand certain key topics in physics, then sign up for my live interactive CSEC physics classes. Full details will be posted below in the description. Like this video if it was helpful and thank you for watching.